We're back. We're live. Uh, here it is uh, on a given Tuesday at the one o'clock rock. And we're doing Think Tech Tech Talks with a fellow by the name of Lynn Muller. Uh, and he is with International Wastewater Systems uh, and joins us by Skype. Lynn, where are you exactly? I'm in my home here in Vancouver. Good. Love Vancouver. Wonderful, wonderful city. Um, so you have invented something and we want to talk about that. Uh, it's a wastewater heat recovery system and you're using it. You've actually installed it in some buildings. Uh, and I, I like to, this is, and this is heat from sewage, from raw sewage. Um, tell us how, you know, what your training was that you could identify this technology and then tell us how you actually identified it. Well, Jay, it's a, it's a kind of a long road to get here, but uh, I started as a farmer and uh, a very practical means of doing things. So uh, I got into the air conditioning and heating business, and then I got into the geothermal heat pump business, and this just kind of led into the sewage heat recovery business. Okay, and then you, one day you decided that maybe we could do this from sewage. Um, I mean, what, how did you come across that thought? Is this something that you knew scientifically or did you, you just think of it one day based on your farming and uh, heat pump experience? Exactly, and, and from having three daughters and, and watching the shower run pretty much all day in the laundry <laughs> and, and uh, thought, my goodness, uh, that old hot water tank's burning out every two years. So. <laughs> it must be working hard. <laughs> so you, you figured that uh, sewage would somehow be able to ferment and the fermentation uh, would provide heat. And then you built, and I've seen it on your uh, website, you built this um, sort of Rube Goldberg contraption with uh, lots, of uh, lots of pipes and, and tanks and the like. And, and it, uh, it looks clean from the outside. And at the end of the day, there it is. Let's take a look at that. What is this and what are the elements of it, Lynn? Well, Jay, it's, we don't ferment the sewage or anything. We just clean it up. So we take warm sewage water and we take all the solids and particles out of it. And we put it through that heat exchanger, you can see. And we just use the second law of thermodynamics that heat moves from warmer to colder and we recover the heat. And we, we make it efficient by using a heat pump. So when we say we're four or five hundred percent efficient, that means for every dollar you spend, you get four or five dollars worth of energy back. In Hawaii, where your electrical rate is very high, that's, that's got to be a very appealing idea. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we care a lot about energy in Hawaii. So uh, let, me, let me understand the process, though. The, the sewage is naturally warm. Is that what it is? Because yep. this just yep. has just come from someone's uh, bathroom. And uh, exactly. using an exchanger, you, uh, you, take, you, the, you exchange the heat out into something that's cooler and thereby make the second, the second system of pipes warmer. What, what does the, the heat pump got to do with that? Well, the heat pump is like your refrigerator. And so when the inside of your refrigerator is cold, but the back of the outside is warm. So that's just moving the heat from one source to another and magnifying mm -hmm. so to a usable temperature. So we can heat up to 140 degree Fahrenheit water. So that's the magnification efficient. process. That's what's interesting. Yep. How do yep. you magnify this relatively small increase uh, difference in temperature to 140 degrees Fahrenheit? Well, you do that, uh, that's where my refrigeration training came in, is you absorb that energy into refrigerant. Then you use the electricity to compress it and increase the temperature. And you do that very efficiently. So, it, but that takes a certain amount of electrical energy, right? Exactly, but only one-fifth to one-quarter of the amount it would take to warm it up using an electric element. Ah, I see, I see. So the, uh, the design you just showed us would, would, uh, would, would heat the water for a certain number of units in, a, say, in a, an apartment building. How many units yeah. would that, that piece of equipment heat up, provide hot well, that water one for? Actually, that one actually went into an apartment building with a thousand apartments. No kidding. Yeah. 
So, and, and how, what does that do, you know, numerically in terms of, you know, an, an outcome? What does that do for that thousand unit apartment building? Well, almost a megawatt of heating energy. So the, when you relate to electricity, it's taking a megawatt off the grid. That's fabulous. Yeah. I just, and it would have, been, would have gone down the drain out into the ocean. Yeah, sure. So now, when you're done exchanging the heat off the sewage, what happens to the sewage? Does that go into the ocean? I mean, where does that go? You no, know, it just continues on its way to the treatment plant. And all we've done is remove the heat out of it. I see. It's but that it's, simple. It, the really so appealing it, thing to DJ is that it's the same heat every day. You use it down the drain, you catch it, you use it again. Yeah. And, and, and the sewage is going to flow like it does in every other building down into the, uh, the yeah. sewage system. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't do anything to it. Uh, we don't do anything to it uh, as far as changing the state. We just change the temperature. So Sorry now it, in the building, uh, this, this depends on the number of people who are using the bathroom in the building, right? It's all Correct. contained within the building. If everybody's on vacation in the Bahamas, then you're going to have less people, fewer people using the bathroom, and therefore uh, the numbers have to change. Am I right? Well, only by the fact that it only needs whatever is coming down the drain. So one of the great things, too, is the source always matches the load. I see. So you can never have too little or too much. Right, because you're, you're, gonna, you're turning this heat back to the same yeah. number of people. So if everybody in, is in the Bahamas, then there are fewer people looking for a hot shower. That's what you're saying, huh? Yeah. But it's the thing that you wouldn't expect is that your sanitary uses, your showers, your laundry, your going to the bathroom, is so predictable, it's frightening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it is. I mean, it is with most people anyway. So. So does that predictability play into it? I mean, are you keeping numbers? Are you keeping uh, analytics oh, on who's going to the bathroom and when? <laughs> yeah, well, the, the human waste part of it is a very small part of it. Uh -huh. but, uh, but the overall occupancy, you could really count on it as part of your base load. So you don't have to think of it as alternative energy because it's predictable as can be. Yeah, well, I guess what you're doing is you're actually keeping the, the, the heat, the energy, within the system. You're, you're, yep. uh, you're just not letting the heat escape. And you keep on recycling the heat through all the systems yep. in the building. Therefore, um, you don't have to buy new heat. It sounds elegant and simple. <laughs> it, it's, it's extremely simple. I guarantee you it's the lowest tech, high tech piece of equipment in the world. Fabulous. Now, now, what is this system? And by the way, this system does not require the whole building to be, uh, you know, outfitted with new plumbing. You're just connecting no. it to the plumbing, right? Uh, that's correct. That's all you're doing. So the room we're looking at now on the slide, uh, that that is that is the only that is it. That's that's, that's your contribution to the systems in the building. Uh, that's right. And I get, two, I get two questions all the time. The number one is, if I put it in my building, will I smell it? Yes. The answer to that is absolutely not. It's completely sealed. And the second question is, what about 2 o'clock in the morning when everybody's in bed and there's no flow? Well, the, the answer to that is that there's probably no use for it at that time. But we also store it in the tank, so we have about half the day's flow stored. Ah, I see. So then, then you store it in the tank, and then you put it through the system whenever you want. That's right. And, and I suppose that if, if this is, is not creating enough heat, you always have the possibility. In fact, it's probably included in the, you know, the contingent aspect of the system uh, that you can buy heat, that you can, you can buy hot water from... from uh, exactly. Wherever, or, or you have a water heater. Am I right? You have yeah, a water we have heater. a backup water heater in case. Yeah, they are they are machines after all, and they will break down from time to time. But yeah. Very seldom, but yeah. you do have to contingency plan for it. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna, I'm gonna ask you my third question. I mean, the third question it appears to me, 
uh, right after this short break, and I'll and I'll tell you in advance my third question. How okay. much how much does this cost? Thanks. We we need yeah. to know what what the pricing is. Okay, we're going to take a short break. That's uh, Lynn Muller. Uh, we're talking about uh, wastewater heat recovery in Vancouver. We'll be right back. Thanks, Jake. Hi, my name is Kim Lau, and I'm the host of Hawaii Rising. You can watch me live every other Monday at 4 p.m. Aloha. Aloha, Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green Think Tech Hawaii. I appear every other Monday at 3 in the afternoon. Do not tune in in the morning. My topic is energy efficiency. It sounds dry as heck, but it's not. We're paying $5 billion a year for imported oil. My job is to shave that, shave that, shave that down in homes and buildings while delivering better comfort, better light, better air conditioning, better everything. So if you're interested in your future, you'd better tune in to me. Three o'clock every other Monday, code green, aloha, and thank you very much. We're back, we're live with Lynn Muller, who joins us by Skype from Vancouver. And uh, he has a company there called International Wastewater Systems, engaged in a discovery he himself made, which is wastewater heat recovery. And he's got an installation or two in some large uh, buildings there in Vancouver. Um, and we've seen some pictures of these, uh, these, uh, these setups and um, it's really remarkable. And I was wondering, I mean, how big is it and how much does it cost? Well, they're, they're sort of custom fit, Jay. So they, there's a range of price from $50,000 to, you know, several million. Mm -hmm. But the common thing is you can expect to recover your money in three to seven years. That's pretty good. So no matter what the cost, you're going to get it back in a very short order. And it's easy to measure that because uh, you, you just take the difference between what you would have spent uh, with uh, heating, heating fuel oil and the like as against what you didn't spend while you had the system working. Well, yeah, absolutely. On, on your break clip there, there was a gentleman on there every other Monday at three, and he was talking about energy efficiency. So we should be talking to him as well, because <laughs> all the energy you throw away in water heating you can get back in Hawaii. I don't imagine there's a lot of heat. Well, I wanted to ask you about that. By the way, that's Howard Wig, and his show on Monday is uh, called Code Green, and he's interested in building codes and how to improve buildings through the uh, use of uh, smart codes, if you will. But uh, so, you know, you, in Vancouver, it gets cold once in a while, uh, not as cold as some of the other parts of Canada, but uh, it's cold. And, I, you know, what, what, appeal, what, what appears to me is that if you have a cold environment like all across Canada and maybe all across the northern U U.S., this is going to be very valuable because, uh, oh, yeah. you know, you need a lot of heat in order for, you know, for residential and, and commercial buildings, for that matter, to operate um, at a reasonable cost. Um, so <clears throat> uh, what about Hawaii, though? We don't, we don't use heat here. We have hot yeah. water. We, I mean, we have a lot of solar hot water and electric hot water and the like. Um, but we don't we don't need a lot of you know heating fuels and that uh, which you would find in uh, in North America. Um, so is it is it still useful for us? Oh, absolutely, because you can air condition with it as well. So instead of moving heat out of the sewer, we can move heat into it. No modification to the system; it just follows the second law of thermodynamics, where heat moves from warmer to colder. So that Heat from your building would move into into the sewer system, and uh, with water being a major issue everywhere in the world, saving that cooling tower water is enormous. I see. So it's the same principle, exactly the same, but it's in reverse. Absolutely. So you're taking essentially the cold from you know, existing air conditioning, I suppose, and you're. Re recycling the cold in the same way Absolutely. that you recycled the heat. Yeah, and saving the water. So uh, we've got one job in, in New Jersey where we can save 60 million gallons of water a year by using the sewer system. Remarkable. So um, what, what is the extent of your, your penetration now? I mean, 
clearly uh, Vancouver and uh, British Columbia, you know, that, that's your home base, but where else have you, and you, and you mentioned a, a thousand unit uh, apartment house there, and, and on your yeah. site there, there are photographs and videos of various uh, buildings, looks like in Vancouver, but how far have you extended your, you know, your marketing? Well, we've just uh, finished our first major university in uh, Scotland. So we converted an entire university uh, from natural gas to sewage heat recovery. We just did one in Camden, New Jersey, in Melbourne, Australia. So we have now uh, got worldwide operations. And you're still talking to us. <laughs> it's a pleasure, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, you know, there's no limit to where this can go. It can go oh, hot, yeah. it can go cold. You know, it's like I was using make a joke about the, the thermos bottle, the famous thermos bottle. And, and the rhetorical question about the thermos bottle is, how does it know the difference? It's the same <laughs> thing with your system. It doesn't need to know the difference. It just but, equalizes. But to, give you, to give you an idea of the scale of the opportunity in the U.S., is. Uh, the Department of Energy in 2009 did a study that showed $40 billion worth of energy is just put down the drain yep. in the U.S. Yep. every year. Yep. So, I mean, are they beating a path to your door? Uh, you know, it, it strikes me that, uh, you know, you have some very nice installations, but this ought to be, this, you know, ought to be, um, uh, you know, a very popular uh, science, a very popular technology and they should be coming to you from all parts of the world because you can save them so much money. Uh, have you been, you know, have you been shy about your marketing? Well, we've really never marketed. So uh, we have relied on word of mouth, et cetera, but it's not unusual to get calls from around the world every day. Yeah, oh, that's great. You must love it, actually, to find uh, a, a environmentally friendly, you know, community-based kind of operation like this, help everybody, uh, make the world a better place. Um, and I, I just wonder, uh, you know, so this has been going on for, what, at least a couple of years now, maybe more. Six years. Six years. And uh, have you made refinements in your original design? Can we talk about what you might have changed? Well, we, we've got bigger. So when we first started we couldn't imagine anybody need more than 300 gallons a minute going through their shark unit. Now we build a unit that does 3,000 gallons. So, and it's better and better all the time. Uh, you know, we learn uh, by trial and error and uh, we continually try to... You, uh, the, yeah, the shark. I remember that from your website. It's the shark. That's yeah. the name of the... Uh, so, so a larger building requires a larger unit. And uh, the one we're looking at right now, uh, how big a building is that? Well, that will do probably four or 500,000 square feet. That's quite something. Now, um, well, we also build a smaller unit we call a piranha. We love the predatory fish names for some reason. So um, we have one that'll do right down to 25 apartment buildings. My, my plan is to have a smaller one that'll do a single household and run on solar power. And I want to have that out years yeah let's just review that possibility in that case you're not buying uh any electricity uh or heat you have it all coming from the solar system and then this will make the solar system that much more efficient by retaining yeah, the direct. heat or the cold within the same the, the container the, the of that house so this is like the, the perfect world when you put them together absolutely and that that's my goal is to be really green and uh, as you can tell I'm, I'm not exactly a 20 year old so <laughs> I don't have a 20 year plan anymore but I have a very good five year plan. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> well what do you want and to do? What's it, what is that plan Lynn? Uh, what what well, does that look like? I want to have International Wastewater be a truly sustainable company from top to bottom. So we want to have a group of young employees that we can keep for their lifetime be fulfilled and happy and productive. So we have some lofty goals and, uh, and every job has got a timestamp, so mine included. So anybody who's qualified can have any job. We haven't found anybody crazy enough to want my job, but I'm sure the day will come. <laughs> I'm sure that they'll be around. So uh, 
what what kind of maintenance does the equipment require? Uh, you know, you can leave. You, you mentioned earlier that once in a while they do break. How do they break, and what do you have to do to prevent them from breaking? Yeah. Well, as you, as you can imagine, Jay, working in the sewer system with wipes and paper and coats and bricks and things that come down, uh, regular maintenance is the key. It's not a it's not a high tech maintenance, but it, it has to be regularly performed. So we go once a year. We basically put all new parts in the shark, and uh, and then three times a year we come in and check everything. So it's planned maintenance. We're so we're so confident in the ability to service the unit. We will give a twenty year fixed contract on the cost of service. Oh, that's great. So, so we do as you can see, it's yeah. done by manual labor by hand, and mm -hmm. it's very low tech. Mm -hmm. Now, what about uh, you know what it, the, the thought does occur to me, and I think we need to cover this is. Uh, when you design something like this and you realize that it's so efficient, so effective, and has such great possibilities around the world, uh, I'm hoping you have, I'm assuming you have some intellectual property on it, some patents. What, what have you got, Lynn? We have an international patent on the shark system itself. So, uh, oddly enough, Jay, though, there's not a lot of people racing into the business. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait till they find out, then they'll be interested. <laughs> we, haven't, uh, we have one, one competitor in Europe, and uh, oddly enough, none of our guys eat corn anymore. I can't figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes low-tech is elusive, you know? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's, it takes a, a simple kind of farmer like me to really understand it. So, uh, but we have uh, we have won numerous numerous major international awards, so oh. we're very pleased with our technology. That's great. Now you haven't mentioned Asia that I caught, and I wonder if uh, this is this would be of uh, interest. I'm sure it would be of interest. Uh, for example, in uh, in Japan and Korea, uh, and certainly in China, because they're interested in uh, you know efficiency too. Have you had any nibbles from that direction? Well, we we uh, actively don't go to that market. Everything I've ever seen you take into there, beat you out of there and ruins your market. So we have no plans to go into Asia. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, you'll see what happens. Now, what about manufacturing? Do you manufacture this in your plant in Vancouver? Um, the, uh, you said that each one is, has its own sort of custom design, but um, uh, how do you get the pieces together? And are there pieces that uh, can be manufactured in a central location? Well, we tend to buy a few parts from suppliers, but the, the vast majority of them we manufacture in Vancouver, uh, Leicester, England, and Melbourne, Australia. The yeah. shark itself we build in, uh, in Canada here, but the rest of it we put together in other places. So interesting that you're doing this. Well, I wish you well. I think this is a, a fabulous design. Uh, you know, at first uh, you wonder about, uh, you know, getting heat through sewage, but the, but the reality is it goes both ways. And, uh, and it's a great technology you've found. And uh, awesome. this sounds like it's exactly what the world needs. And I'm happy to, to have you here to showcase you on Think Tech Tech Talks so we can learn more about it. And I hope we can check back with you in, in some months or a year and find out how you're realizing this dream, Lynn. Oh, thanks, Jay. And, uh, you know, I, I really think the world is warming up. And if we could just reuse a third of the heat, why wouldn't we? There you go. It's connected thanks, to Jay. global climate change and all that. It's a story of, of a hot product uh, exchanging heat. <laughs> you know what I'd like to suggest to you, Jay, is next time you want to do an interview, I'll come to Hawaii and we'll do it live at studio. <laughs> there you go. I'm going to make a note of that. <laughs> Lynn Muller from Wastewater Thanks Heat so Recovery. Much, Thank you so much. Aloha. Aloha.